In the A schedule of the governor, clean the governor with a clean cloth. Ensure that all the foundation bolts of the governor are fully tightened. Check the level of governor oil in the sight glass. If the oil level is below the recommended level, top up with T77 filtered governor oil. After topping up, remember to tighten the cap properly. Also, check for any oil leakage from the governor. If any oil leakage is detected from any joint or any part of the governor, send the governor to the section for repairs. Check the amphenol plug fitted in the governor. It should be properly gripped in its socket. Ensure proper fitment of the governor linkage to the governor base plate. Ensure that the lube oil pipe connected to the governor is properly tightened. Ensure that the governor oil filling cap is fully tightened. Replace the old governor filter with a new one. Ensure that the governor filter is fully tightened. Wipe all the loose dust and dirt from the body of the traction alternator with a clean lintless cloth. Then air blow the traction alternator with dry compressed air of pressure 2 to 4 kg per centimeter square. Then clean thoroughly the interiors and the insulator pins of the traction alternator with a clean cloth moistened with recommended solvent. Check the carbon brushes of the traction alternator. All the carbon brushes should move freely in their holders. If any carbon brush is not moving freely, clean the carbon brush with clean lintless cloth. Also, clean the pockets of the carbon brush thoroughly with clean lintless cloth. If the size of the carbon brush has reached its critical limit or has got damaged or broken, change the carbon brush. Check the pigtail shunts of the carbon brush. If the copper braids of the shunt has got worn out, broken, or overheated, change the carbon brush. Manually check the spring pressure of the carbon brush holder. If the spring pressure feels less or more than normal, change the carbon brush holder. Visually check the interiors of the traction alternator. The pole joints, slip ring connector bolts, brush connector etc should not be overheated or should not have any flash marks. If any of these parts is found overheated or has undergone change in color, take appropriate action. Check the slip ring. The surface of the slip ring should be smooth. If it is rough or has flash marks, burnt marks, remove it properly with the emery paper or a clean lintless cloth. If the slip ring surface has heavy pit marks or wrinkles. Send it for resurfacing in the section. Also, clean 
the slip ring connector bowl with clean lintless cloth. Check the oil level in the traction alternator gear case. If it is below the maximum mark on the dipstick, top up with the recommended oil. Also, trace outputs of oil leakage from the traction alternator if required. Visually check the sealing of the fan foundation bowls of the traction alternator. They should be intact and the fan blades should be in good condition. Ensure that all the power cables are properly clamped and are not fouling with any metallic part of the machine. In the A schedule of power rectifier, remove the rectifier covers and clean the loose dust and dirt on power diodes and the bus bars with a clean cloth. Then blow with dry compressed air. Open the covers of the power rectifier and check the condition of the shunts for overheating, stiffness, etc. Also ensure that all the shunts are completely tightened. Check and tighten all the terminal connections of the power rectifier. Check the check washers under the nylock nuts. The washers should be loose. If any washer is tight, tighten the bolt to loosen the check washers. Check and tighten all the AC lead connecting bolts. The auxiliary machines in diesel electric locomotives are the auxiliary generator, the exciter generator, the front truck traction motor blower, and the eddy current clutch assembly. We'll first talk about the maintenance procedures of the auxiliary generator. The maintenance procedures for both the auxiliary generator and the exciter generator are the same. Clean the surface and covers of the auxiliary generator thoroughly with a clean lintless cloth. Then air blow the auxiliary generator with dry compressed air of pressure 2 to 4 kg per centimeter square. Then clean the interiors of the auxiliary generator with a clean lintless cloth moistened with the recommended solvent. Check the backlash between the bull gear and the pinions. The backlash should be appropriate. Check the auxiliary machine for signs of oil leakage. If there are any signs of oil leakage from the rubber or ring and the felt oil seal from the fan side, attend to it accordingly. Check all the carbon brushes of the auxiliary generator. If any carbon brush is not moving freely in its holder, clean the carbon brush with lintless cloth. Also, clean the pockets with clean lintless cloth. If any carbon brush is broken or damaged, 
or has reached its critical size, change the carbon brush. If the copper braids of the carbon brush pigtail shunt has got damaged, overheated or worn out, change the carbon brush. Now check the commutator condition. The color of the film over the commutator should be uniform. Ensure that all the interconnectors of the auxiliary generator are properly secured and are not touching any moving part of the machine. Check and ensure that all the cables are properly secured in their pipes. Ensure that the dowel pin is properly welded on the body of the auxiliary generator. After all the checks have been carried out, fit the cover of the auxiliary generator properly. Check all the foundation bolts of the auxiliary generator. All the bolts should be fully tightened. Open the terminal box of the auxiliary generator and check all the terminal connections of the generator. Ensure that all the connections are fully tightened and the thimbles are properly crimped. Check the foundation bolts of the front truck traction motor blower. All the bolts should be completely tightened. Check the backlash of the FTTM blower by checking the circumferential movement of the blower fan. The backlash should be appropriate. Air blow the eddy current clutch assembly with dry compressed air. Open the carbon brush holder caps of the ECC assembly and check all the carbon brushes. The carbon brushes should move freely in their sockets. Check the size of the carbon brush. If it has reached its critical limit, change the carbon brush. If the pigtail shunt of the carbon brush is overheated or worn out, change the carbon brush. All the carbon brushes should be properly seated on the slip ring. Check the wires, conduit pipes and the terminal box of the ECC assembly. The wires should be properly secured and the terminal box should be properly clamped. In the ECC assembly, check the condition of the slip ring. If the slip ring has flash marks or burnt marks, clean with lintless cloth or emery paper. There should be no rubbing between the rotor and drum of the ECC. Check the current drawing by the ECC coil. The value of current drawn should be less than 8.5 amperes. The small motors of the diesel electric locomotives are Taco generator, axle generator, fuel pump motor, crankcase exhauster motor, and the dust exhauster blower motor. Here we will talk about the prescribed maintenance procedures for the taco generator, axle generator, and the fuel pump motor. The maintenance procedures for crankcase exhauster motor and dust exhauster blower motor 
are similar to the fuel pump motor. Check the fitment of the taco generator and ensure that the wire is properly secured in the flexible pipe. Visually check all the foundation bolts of the taco generator. They should be intact. Open the terminal box of the taco generator and check all the terminal connections for tightening. All the connections must be fully tightened. Open the back side cover of the taco generator and check the backlash between the nylon gear and the cam gear by moving the rotor slightly in clockwise and anti-clockwise direction. Slip a piece of paper between the rotor and the stator to check the gap between them. If the paper slips freely between the rotor and the stator, the gap is appropriate. If the gap is not appropriate, check the fitment of the motor and take action. Ensure that all the foundation bolts of the taco generator are present and are fully tightened. Check all the foundation bolts of the axle generator. All the foundation bolts must be completely tightened. Ensure that all the wires are properly secured in the pipe and the pipe is properly clamped. Check the rubber coupling and the split pins. The rubber coupling must be in good condition. If the coupling is broken, send the axle generator for repairs. Ensure that the axle generator is moving freely in its stator. Open the terminal box of the axle generator and check the terminal connections for tightness. All the terminal connections must be completely tightened. In the A schedule of the fuel pump motor, run the fuel pump motor for 15 minutes. If any abnormal sound is observed from the motor, trace the fault in the fuel pump motor and take appropriate action. If any abnormal heating or abnormal odor is observed, check the current drawn by the fuel pump motor. Connect an ammeter in series with the wire number 71 and the motor coil. The current drawn should not be more than 12.5 amperes. If it is, examine the reasons for the excess current drawing and rectify accordingly. Clean the exterior of the fuel pump motor with clean linseed cloth. Then air blow the motor with dry compressed air thoroughly. Now clean the interiors of the fuel pump motor with both dry and wet cloths moistened in recommended solvent. After the cleaning, check the commutator condition. If there is carbonization on the commutator, clean the commutator with lintless cloth. In case of heavy carbonization, use emery paper. If any ovality is observed in the commutator, send the fuel pump motor for repairs in the section. If any sparking is observed in the commutator, check the carbon brush spring, pressure, size of the carbon brush, ovality of the commutator and shifting of neutral axis. 
and take appropriate action. Now check the carbon brushes for their free movement, size of the carbon brushes, condition of carbon brush pigtail shunts, carbon brush holders and carbon brush spring pressure as explained earlier in the traction alternator section. Also check the fitment of the carbon brush pocket. Clean the pocket with clean lintless cloth. Ensure that the rubber sealing arrangement between the fuel pump motor cover and body should be proper. All the foundation bolts of the fuel pump motor should be completely tightened. In the fuel pump motor for overhaul in the section after every six months. In the A schedule of fuel pump, check the fuel booster pump seal. Ensure that there should be no sign of oil leakage from the pump seal, suction pipe and the delivery pipe of the fuel booster pump. If there are any signs of oil leakage, send the pump for repairs. Visually check the condition of lovejoy coupling and the spiders. If there is excessive wear and tear in the coupling arrangement, send the fuel pump to the section for a change of Lovejoy couplers. The spiders should be in good condition. Ensure that the gap between the couplers is appropriate. If the gap is excess, adjust the gap with an Allen key. Before adjusting the gap with the Allen key, Ensure that the key of the couplers is not sheared off. Check the tightness of Allen screw of the coupler using an Allen key. Ensure that all the foundation bolts are fully tightened. In the C schedule of the fuel pump, Send the fuel pump for overhaul in the section. After every six months. Remove the loose dust and dirt from the covers and leads of the traction motors. Then open the covers and blow with dry compressed air. Now clean the interiors of the traction motor with moistened cloth in recommended solvent. Check externally the fitment of both the PE and the CE side bearing cap bolts. Also touch the bearing caps of both these ends for any signs of overheating. Check the carbon brush, the carbon brush spring pressure carbon brush pockets, carbon brush shunt of all the traction motors as shown in the earlier sections. Check the commutator condition for signs of flash marks or discoloration. If any flash marks are found on the commutator, clean it with emery paper. Check the condition of the V-ring. Check the arc rings. The arc rings and its bulb should be properly tightened. Visually check the joints of the interpole, main pole and the brush holder joints. Check the leads of the traction motors. All the leads should be properly secured and cleated. There should be no fouling with any machine parts or the underframe of the locomotive.
This brings us to the end of this training video film module on the prescribed maintenance schedules of electrical sub-assemblies of diesel electric locomotives. In our next training video film module, we will talk about the prescribed locomotive operations for the diesel electric locomotive.